Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Beck Holland and I'm the head of sales development over at Chorus.ai. I have with me today the wonderful Grace Tyson, who is um, our manager over our SMB and ISR sales. Hi Grace, what's up? Hi Beck, nice to be here, thank I, you. I wanted to have you join us today because we wanted to cover a topic of the classic objection of hey, I'm not the right person whenever someone reaches out mm -hmm. to you. Um, so I know that you've been responsible for, you really head up our enablement here too, and you've been very involved in the coaching. You have a teaching background, correct? Yes, Yeah. I do. So I know that you have kind of a predilection, a love towards that. And so I know that you've been involved in purchasing a lot of software. And so I wanted to ask you a couple of questions and unpack the six step process of how to turn I'm not the per right person into a meeting. Awesome. So typically you have two prospects. You have prospect A of the person that you reached out to, and then you have prospect B of the person that you actually want to book. So the first step, I'm gonna start with a question. Okay. Um, Grace, do you like asking for directions? No. <laughs> well, <laughs> me either. Why not? Um, I don't like to admit that I'm wrong. Yeah. And I also don't like talking to strangers. Right. Even though I'm in sales. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I don't think anyone really likes talking to strangers. Um, so I've seen that a lot with, I mean, even myself, I don't want to, I don't want to ask for directions just because I'm not the expert. Um, but let me ask you a second question. Do you like giving directions? Of course. And why do you like giving directions? Uh, makes me feel like I'm in the know. Right. And so what does that mean in terms of the person that asks you directions? How do you feel about them after you've given them, um, some, you know, word of mentorship? I feel good about them. I feel like I've helped someone out. So it makes me feel, makes me feel good. Right. Bingo. So the first step that you want to do is you want to bind yourself to prospect A mm -hmm. by asking for, uh, for a bit of advice. So they'll say like, hey, actually I'm not the right person. Actually, Sean is the one that heads up this effort. And so the first thing that I counter with is saying, you know, any piece of advice on reaching out to them or any piece of, you know, direction on what will really resonate with them. Mm -hmm. So number one, you'll get a lot of intel information, you know, on insider information on what's going on in the company and what Sean likes. But number two is it makes this nice little pair of, I now feel a little bit more mm -hmm. indebted um, to the person for prospect A. Absolutely. Um, so step number two, let me ask you a qu another question. Okay, I'm ready. Um, is, what happens, is what happens to Chorus, does that matter to you more? Or what happens to you at Chorus matter to you more? I'm selfish, so what happens to me <laughs> at Chorus matters more to me. So if I were to do outreach to you based on um, something that just happened with Chorus or something that just happened to you, which one do you think would trigger you more to respond? The one that's about me and what happened to me. Right, bingo. Mm -hmm. So number two is you want to reach out to prospect B and you want to give the referral for reference but you then want to, um, you want to make it about prospect B because just because you've built pros uh, rapport with prospect A does not mean that you've built uh, rapport with prospect B. So I typically do some kind of email like this, you know, hi, let's say the person's name is Blake. Hi, Blake. You know, reason for my outreach is actually, you know, Grace sent me along the way. Mm -hmm. uh, but more importantly, I saw this article on your LinkedIn and I just couldn't stop reading. One line that stood out to me was X you know, what if you could X without X? So the, the second email, the key here is I want to make, mention the grace referral of prospect A for reference, um, but then I also want to make a customized pitch so that I can focus on building rapport with my, my internal buyer. Um, so the third point, I want to ask you another question. I'm just gonna ask you questions, a lot okay, of questions I'm here. ready. <laughs> okay, if I were to fall down in front of you, mm -hmm. is your first inclination to kick me while I'm down or is it to help me and pick me up? Help you and pick you up, of right. course. I hope, oh my gosh, I hope. I have to say that, but yes. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm like off camera, it's a different story. Um, so step number three is you want to, if this hasn't triggered you know, your prospect B to respond, you wanna reach back out to them and you wanna fall on your sword a little bit um, and you wanna say, hey, something like this of, I typically mention, um, if our prospects don't respond to it, it's not because they're bad people. Mm -hmm. It's because our pitch wasn't compelling enough. So I typically take onus in that and accountability. And I'll send them an email, something like, 
you know, hi, reason for my outreach is I came across this bit the other day on sending over outreach that resonates with your prospect. Um, I was really convicted about the message I sent with you, uh, sent to you that it didn't quite hit the mark mm -hmm. with your permission. I'd like another shot at earning some of your time. And then I'd go into a custom pitch. So I want to pair this with another custom pitch and try and tighten up on my buyer persona of like this message didn't work with prospect B. So I want to go into something else and I want to pair it with this nice flavor, flavor of taking accountability for something that right. didn't work. Yep. Um, so point number four, um, let me ask you my fourth question. Um, do you like giving advice um, to others in like a mentee relationship? Absolutely. Yes. And why do you think you are like, why do you think you like that? Uh, it makes me feel good to help other people. Yeah. yeah. It makes me feel like I'm in the know, I have power, but also just gives me a good feeling. And totally. I think it's a, a human condition of we like just helping other people of like, let me, you know, walk someone across the street or let me help someone whenever they're struggling a little bit. And so you want to go back to, and your fourth step is back to prospect mm -hmm. A, and you want to give them an update on, you know, hey, this actually didn't work and pair it with a little fall on your sword language mm -hmm. of, you know, I reached out to prospect B and I feel like I just wasn't relevant to them or didn't hit something that really hit the mark. And so any advice on how I should proceed from there. So you want to give them a little update mm -hmm. and say, you know, hey, you know, this happened, but you also want to try and, and build some kind of, you know, um, partnership there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Absolutely. So the, the fifth step, if I were to walk across this room and I were to walk towards the door and I was going to say, Hey, Grace, I'm leaving. Um, what is your internal reaction to that? Um, I'd be sad. I enjoy talking to you. It'd be sad. So <laughs> I don't want you to close the door on me. You don't want me to close the no. door on you. So you want, want to stop me? Yes, and uh, absolutely. Why do you think you want to stop me? Um, because I don't want a door to be closed. I don't want the opportunity to be gone for us to work together. Right. So even whenever we're reaching out and we're prospecting someone, they don't like it whenever we close down the relationship. So in the fifth step, I reach uh, back out to prospect B and I break up with them. And it usually goes something like this, you know, hi, Blake. Uh, reason for my outreach is I just want to reach out one last time and make sure I didn't overstep my bounds. Given your, you know, customized whatever you told me, you know, I thought it originally made sense to reach out. Maybe it's me, but I'm getting the fe feeling it's just not the best time to connect. Mm -hmm. Did I get that right? Perhaps, you know, if not, no worries. Perhaps we can connect in the future. So you want to drip the language with instead of saying like, hey, I reached out to you seven times and you didn't respond and putting that accountability on you. Right. Shifting that accountability to me and saying, okay, I'm going to just close the loop here mm -hmm. um, and taking kind of accountability and giving the flavor of, I just want to make sure, sure that I didn't overstep here. Um, and then the last step, um, if I, or the last question that I have for you, if I were to give you advice on what to do of how to talk to our CEO, Roy, if I said, go say this to him and mm -hmm. he'll do this, and you go and say that to him and it doesn't work, whose fault was it didn't, it, whose fault was it that it didn't work? Well, I feel like it was your fault. Right. So <laughs> you, you <laughs> told me what that. to do and it didn't work. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, so the, whose advice failed in that scenario? Your advice. It's my advice. Bingo. So in the sixth step, you want to reach back out to prospect A And you want to give them an update of like, hey, it just didn't work out. So the same flavor to me of messaging of like, I reached out to B, you know, it didn't work, um, didn't work. And, you know, the, the outreach didn't trigger a response. Maybe it's just me, but I'm getting the feeling that maybe it's now just not a mm -hmm. good time for, you know, Okta to buy our product. And so what do you, if you gave someone advice and that advice failed, what would you feel like? I would want to make it right. Right. Well, you inherently would want to make it right. So if you were internal to a company and you gave someone advice and that advice didn't work, what would you like and like impetuously want to do? I'd want to reach out to that person and try to get that, get that intro. Bingo. So we want to create a bond and rapport and a friendship with the person that we reach out to originally. I see a lot of people, they reach out, they say, I'm not the right person. And they're like, I'm going to discard them and go on. 
But regardless of who we're talking to, whether that's you know someone who's an intern, whether that's a CEO, whether that's a director, we need to treat everyone with respect and we need to value the relationships, especially yes. if there are ones that's internal. You know, tech is small, companies are small, and so we want to make sure that we value every single person along the way and that we make them our champion in the process. So that's it. Those are the six steps. So in review, how to turn I'm not the right person into a meeting is you bind yourself with prospect A by asking them to for advice. <laughs> you reach out to prospect B um, with context of the referral and then give them a custom pitch. If it doesn't work, you go back to prospect B, fall on the sword, take accountability for the, the outreach not working and go in with another custom pitch. If that doesn't work, go back to prospect A, give them an update <laughs> and ask for any advice on what to do next. That doesn't work, go back to prospect B and break up with them and go back to prospect A and break up with them. So thanks everyone for watching and hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you.